Ed, you've talked about inequality in the U.S., uh, but what about inequality generally around the globe and issues of poverty and so forth? Yes, yeah, so there's questions with regard to inequality within other countries, but even more important questions about inequality between countries. If you want to find a region where the countries with the greatest internal inequality lies, that's Latin America. Brazil has one of the most unequal income distributions on the globe, at least in terms of the measures that come out of the World Bank. But if you look at it on a global scale, global inequality is much, much greater than even Brazil because we have many, many people around the globe living in extremely poor conditions, terrible poverty. And I'm talking about India and China, Indonesia and, and Mexico and Brazil and all of Eastern Europe and, and Africa. The globe, that, that is my view, is the number one problem that the globe must resolve. After World War II, we had about a third of humanity who chose to live in an integrated economic system, in, including Europe, North, uh, Western Europe, uh, North America, and Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. And there's tremendous economic gains in this region. The, the barriers that were preventing workers from uh, elsewhere in the world from interacting with this one-third of humanity, those barriers were pulled down because they were unsustainable given the enormous economic success that occurred in that integrated, connected community. So we now have in front of us a horrific problem, which is how are we going to integrate that two-thirds of humanity who are paid hardly anything compared to workers that, that we know here in North America or in Europe, how are we going to integrate them into a uh, effective economic community? And the problem that these liberalizations face, the ones in Latin America and in Asia, is they promise workers uh, American lifestyles. Not necessarily tomorrow, but probably the day after. It's going to be very difficult to deliver on that promise. And as year after year goes by, and those poverty rates continue to be very, very high in these developing countries, as that promise remains unfulfilled, there's likely to be a political backlash. And it's a kind of backlash that's not going to work well for the whole globe. It's not going to be good for the United States. It's not going to be good for the citizens in the third world either. With that said, has the movement towards opening up markets and more freedom and democracy in, in countries like China, is that, is that helping the situation, though, very rapidly? Or? Well, you can see pockets, certain pockets around the globe that have integrated with the, with the uh, high-wage marketplaces. So that means the coastal regions of China. It means the northern states of Mexico. It means those Eastern European states that are adjacent to Western Europe, which means Poland and the Czech Republic and Hungary. You can see substantial economic improvement there. But there's, that, that's just a small sliver of humanity in terms of the number of people who would like to be part of the system. So I think that's what you're likely to see is more of that. There will be these communities that become the manufacturing centers of the mundane, labor-intensive kinds of activities like Shanghai and like Baja and Mexico and Monterey. You'll see economic improvements in there. But the rest of the globe, the rest of Mexico is too far south to integrate with the United States. Latin America is too far away. The inland of China is, has a heck of a hard time integrating with, these, with the uh, high-wage marketplaces. So we're seeing uh, what is actually a growing inequality in a third world, not a growing equality as a consequence of this globalization because of the geographical dimension of the economic growth, highly concentrated in certain favored regions, regions that mostly because of shipping or, or, or coastal access can, or, or in the case of northern states of Mexico being right adjacent to the United States, <clears throat> those regions that have uh, natural easy access to the high-wage marketplaces, those become the favored regions, and the rest of the world is just saying, how can I possibly be part of that? Uh, I'm sure there's no easy solution, but again, does education play a role here? Uh, is that where we start? Well, the, the um, solution to the third world is to attract manufacturing. Those communities that are effectively fighting the um, impending poverty, rising poverty, they attract manufacturing. And you do that through education. You don't have to have a college degree, but you have to have literacy to attract the lowest levels of manufacturing. And the second is infrastructure. If you want to move higher up the food chain, then you got to attract these knowledge workers, the innovative people who, will, who can really create value added. To do that, you have to have a nice place to live. So those three things, I think, are critical for almost every community around the globe. Education, high-quality infrastructure, which allows you to link to the global marketplaces, 
and then have nice places for your workers to live.